this video is for anyone obsessed with geode style tie-dye, I'm going to show you my process of tying and applying dye with the cold mist method. I have two shirts that I'm going to tie one single geode on the front of. I'm using artificial sinew and a PVC pipe as my puller. The reason I'm doing two shirts is I want to show you the difference between tying the ties parallel to each other and then tying them 90 degrees or perpendicular. I like to refer to it as a wedge tie because of the shape that it makes with the fabric um, kind of wicking in more dye and liquid. But anyway, I'll get to that more later. Right now, in the area where people would normally be adding a tie right there, I'm taking some time to scrunch the fabric in the path of the tie so that it will look more jagged and interesting. Um, you can just like scrunch up the fabric in general, but I find that it helps with color saturation to just scrunch the area where the tie will be instead of the whole bunch of fabric because then it gets too thick and the dye can't get in there. Okay, so to protect my knuckles from hitting the table, I just use another shirt and pull the sinew tight. I usually wrap it four or five times. Five seems to be the best, um, four also works. So instead of doing the ties parallel, which is how I've done it for years, um, I recently experimented with creating a tie that goes perpendicular to the first one. So I'm doing more scrunching here over the area where I'm gonna put the sinew, and I'm gonna wrap that five times and then pull it tight. When you're first starting off, you might be wondering how tight to pull the sinew. And when you're pulling it, you're gonna feel a couple clicks where the sinew is locking into place and that's exactly where you want to stop because that gets it really tight but if you pull it beyond that it, the sinew will usually break and when it breaks it becomes really difficult to dig out and untie uh, I can't tell you how frustrating it is to have it stuck in there and then I rip a hole in the shirt with something trying to get the sinew out so anyway it just takes practice to know how hard you have to pull before the sinew will break so I just continue flipping the shirt over and pushing the fabric to the right and then putting on another tie that is perpendicular to the last one that I tied. Um, I keep scrunching it so I can get interesting ties. I don't want them to just look like a bullseye, so I just scrunch it with my fingers and then um, tie it with the sinew. Another note about getting clean, really crisp lines with the geo tie or whatever style you're tying. It helps if your shirt has a little bit of spandex in it. I love these cotton spandex shirts. They have 5% spandex and they make it a lot easier to get crisp lines. So I'm finished with this geode and I'm going to the second shirt where I'm gonna do the normal style of tying that most people do that I did forever. And I'll still be doing this. Um, it's just a variation and um, this, I think the reason I started playing with the wedge kind of tie is because I'm obsessed with getting even saturation of color and not having blotchiness, not having blotchy white areas where the dye couldn't get into the fabric. And it seems like it's difficult to get good saturation with the ties when they're parallel to each other and they're too close. So there's always this balance of, I want to have really detailed geodes like lots of ties so it looks really complex but sometimes for me when it gets too complex then it starts looking blotchy so i realized that i could do the wedge shape tie and then i could fit in more ties so it looks more detailed without losing good saturation of the color um, it's kind of a bust though with this video because you'll see at the end both shirts end up looking fabulous So I wish I had used colors that were that are generally more difficult to saturate into tight folds because then it might have like Proven my point a little more. So I think I will do another video where I use some reds and browns to show how the wedge shaped tie um, helps facilitate those dyes going into the tight areas Okay, so I did five ties per each geode here, and I think I'm finishing up the last one here. 
To finish off your tying, you don't need to add any knots to hold down the sinew. It will stay in place on its own, so just trim off the end with a couple inches to hang off there and you're good to go. So here's what they look like next to each other. I kind of wish I had taken a larger section with each geode to push the limits of saturation here, but maybe in the next video. So I'm just scrunching up the rest of the shirt just for the sake of um, moving on and I'm trying to do everything on each shirt the same so that we can control all the variables and see what the differences will be. Um, so I'm showing you the scrunch part because in the end it actually looks really cool. That wasn't the point of the video, but I learned that I actually really liked doing that. It looks very pretty. These are the colors that I chose to use. One of my very favorite color combinations of um, getting great saturation. So I added some soda ash on top. I just sprinkled it on top to dry shirts. These were not pre-soaked in any way and saturation and vibrancy seems to be fine doing that. Um, sprinkling on the darkest color very sparingly because I don't want to overpower anything. And then the mid-tone color, which is brushed steel, that's probably what I used the most of. That is the workhorse of this color combination. And I'm using my hose attachment on the mist setting to spray the shirts with cold water. Uh, I like this because I don't have to make ice or go buy ice. That's why I started doing this because I was running out of ice and really that was annoying. And also you can tie dye these shirts with this method a lot faster so you can see the results faster and learn, I think make better connections when you're learning when you can see the results faster. So anyway, um, I have a lot of control with this method because I can sit there and watch the dye and stop spraying when it looks good to me. So my goal, I'm always thinking, um, when is the dye like halfway rinsed th through the shirt? And that's when I flip it over and add more dye and more soda ash and then continue misting. I want the top, like the surface, of the fabric to kind of look like a jewel tone so I try to rinse out the dye from the very um, surface so that there will be some variation in how saturated the color is. I don't want it to look like I liquid dyed it. So I really want it to look like it's been ice dyed but without the ice. So I just continue until it looks like I want it to look. I'm trying to do it the same on both shirts. And in the end, I added a little more of the, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce, the lightest color that I showed you earlier. Um, I add it in the areas where the dye has been washed away because those are dark colors. So I put it on top of the parts of the fabric that look lighter because the cold water has washed those parts to be lighter and then you can redeposit a lighter color. I kind of think of this as like blush. You don't want to go too heavy with the blush um, because then it'll be distracting on the face. But when you add just enough, it's really interesting, warms up the piece or the face and looks beautiful. So I'm putting it into a bin of hot water for about an hour to set the colors faster. And then after that, I just rinse it with some cold water and super excited to show you these. I think they turned out pretty great and I might be doing more like this with just one geode on the front and i'm really excited with how the scrunch looks on the back i think that looks really pretty with this dye color combination so i'm pretty happy about that and here's the first one these this is the one with the ties parallel turned out pretty good this color combination is excellent for good saturation into tight folds so it's hard to see what was actually accomplished with this second tie here, but you can see the colors are a little smoother um, in the one on the right, which I would call the wedge tie. And but overall, they both look great. So I'm curious which one you prefer, if you like the lines to be uniformly spaced or more messy looking. And I'm curious if you can tell the difference between the smoothness and color between the ties in here. It's kind of hard to tell on the right, but there is a little bit more blotchiness and the color on the left is smoother. Um, but I'll show that in another video using reds and I think that will help demonstrate the difference. So yeah, 
Let me know if this inspires you to create.